Welcome back to part 12 of upgrading my small lathe. Last episode we worked on the drive and uh, got most of that completed. Uh, today we're going to work on the chuck and uh, find a way to mount the chuck on the mandrel. Uh, this has an M14 thread and this has an imperial thread so we're going to have to think about how to do that. Uh, last episode I had a go at joining uh, this old poly belt material which failed so I ordered some new material, have made a belt and now we can try the drive and see how it performs. So that's the medium speed range. And then the low speed range. And then finally the high speed range. So I've set my clock up on the cross slide of the lathe and I'm just going to check the mandrel here for concentricity. The first surface I'm going to check is uh, the perimeter of this flange. That's the easiest to check. And a uh, little bit of a surprise there, it's about one thou out. In and of itself that doesn't matter too much. We'll check the face of this as well. Well, that's not too bad. That's about five tenths. And then we'll have a go at checking the zero morse taper. I've cleaned out the zero morse taper already, and that is a nice snug fit. So we'll just uh, try on this JT0 taper, see how that looks. I don't know if you can see that, but that is a mile out. That's about three and a half thou out. Now I check this beforehand and I can be reasonably sure that it's nothing to do with the taper mandrel itself. So if we just check on the bore, We get the same reading. So, as unlikely as it seems, it's actually the mandrel. So, the zero morse taper in the mandrel here is not concentric with the mandrel itself. Neither is that flange. Let's have a look at the screw thread. To measure the concentricity of the screw thread with the mandrel, I've got this small number drill here which fits nicely in the V of the thread and uh, I can traverse the clock into position using the saddle and I've zeroed this out at this position and then if I rotate the mandrel I've done this by trial and error before so I know where the high and low spots are and try again you can see there that's about two thousandths of an inch out of concentricity so we've got a number of issues here. We've got the issue of the thread in relation to the mandrel, the zero morse taper in relation to the mandrel, which is even further out than the thread, and this flange. So that's something I want to sort out at the same time as fitting this chuck. So this has a, a 14 millimeter thread and um, I've checked the sizes uh, we can have a look at the drawing and we can see that I've got enough material here to remove this thread here replace it with an M14 and um, 
hopefully restore concentricity. So the way I'm proposing machining this mandrel um, is to create a dummy center on the end here. And uh, well, the way I'm going to do that is to use this plug and that has a, a short length of zero morse taper on here and a shoulder. And um, I've got those dimensions quite um, close to allow me to push this into the taper and for the any end thrust to be taken up on this collar here. And the idea there is that as just as this comes into contact with the zero morse taper, at the same time the flange on the end there mates with the end of the mandrel. So that will stop it from being pushed inside. You'll notice that there is a center on the, the end here. I'm not actually going to use that center. I'm going to remachine that center. So we're going to mount this, use some adhesive to hold it in place, and then I'm going to machine in this lathe this diameter here, which will be a reference diameter. So when I transfer this to the other machine, I will be able to get this running true on the end here, uh, because I can't use any of these references surfaces because they're no good. I'll know this one is bang on the center of the axis of the shaft, and I'll true that up, and then I'll remachine the center hole in the end there, so that um, when I put this between centers, well, this end in a four jaw chuck, that, that up against the center, I'll know that the whole thing is running true. The fact that the zero morse tapers out, that's going to be a problem for later, and if I want to true that up, I'll true that up at a later stage. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Time to remove the mantra and take it over to the other lathe for machining. So I brought the work over to my Myford lathe and uh, we're going to set this up now true, ready for machining that center. As it turns out, I've been able to get this uh, pretty true using my four-jaw self-centering chuck. Uh, what I actually did was uh, rotate the work and tighten up all three uh, points around the circumference, and uh, I've got that pretty true. So that's okay now for recentering. So I'm going to actually machine the center in the end there. There's another opportunity to use the small boring tool holder I made a couple of videos ago. This time instead of using a broken tap I'm using a broken center drill. I'll we'll just zoom in a little and have a look. So what I've done is um, provide some relief here and cut away the other side so that we can set this up um, using the compound side at 30 degrees and we can just true up that center. Now 
Well, we're ready now to uh, turn off this old thread and we'll take this down to um, this diameter here, uh, tidy that up and then we'll just uh, give this a very light skim here and then we'll relieve this portion here so that we're ready to put on the ring which will form the shoulder and uh, we're going to shrink that um, shrink fit that ring hopefully So I'm applying layout blue here because I want to turn the rest of the material down and leave a shoulder and you can see I'm just polishing that line now uh, that's the working surface for the ring to be shrunk onto. But there's a land which will uh, enable us to slip the ring easily over this portion and then we only have to worry about getting it over the actual uh, mating diameter on the end here and then hopefully nice and tight against this collar. So here we have the shaft with the collar. Uh, it's really quite small, it's only 1 8 inch uh, thick that collar and similarly the ring is 1 8 of an inch. Uh, I've measured the diameter off, uh, off the shaft and that's come out at 0.6105 and then the calculation that we need to determine um, what kind of interference fit we're going to get is the change in diameter is the original diameter times the coefficient of expansion which I've looked up in my tables and then the temperature difference between um, between the work when it's cold and when the work when it's hot so effectively the temperature of the mandrel which will be cold and the temperature of the ring which will heat up with a blow lamp so um, I've looked up and the range for C for steel is 10.8 to 12.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters per meters per degree C. Uh, so you don't need to worry about the meters there because the meters on the top and the bottom. So it's the same for inches and meters. It's just a coefficient. So basically the rate of expansion is a function of uh, temperature uh, times the uh, times the the dimension. So if you measure it in inches, the change will be in inches. If you measure it in millimeters, the change will be in millimeters. Uh, the other bit of data I need here is I'm going to heat this up to a dull red heat, faint red heat, which is around about 500 degrees C. So put this into the equation. Delta change in diameter is diameter original diameter times C times the change in temperature. So put those figures in and uh, you end up with a change in diameter of just under three and a half thou. Well I want to work a bit conservatively there, I'm going to work on two thou. So that means I'm going to make my ring two thou smaller in diameter, internal diameter, than the existing collar, the existing um, collar here on the shaft. And that will give us an interference fit when the ring cools down. So because this collar has come out at 0 0.6105, we want to make this bore 2,000 less than that. So that comes out at 0 0.6085. So uh, that's a bit tricky to measure with my calipers, but I'll do my best. All I'm looking for is a 2,000 um, reduction in diameter as compared with this.
Please note, I've not wrapped the abrasive paper around my finger, but I've wrapped it around the handle of the chuck key. It's actually quite dangerous to put your finger into a hole like this. Just preparing to part off the ring, measuring with my small ruler. Uh, this is quite uh, tough stuff, but I uh, was able to part it off successfully. I was just a bit too late there to catch the ring before it dropped into the tray. I'm heating the ring up here to a dull red heat. I've got everything ready, including the mandrel in the vise, ready to swing round with the pliers and drop the ring into position. Unfortunately, I don't think we videoed it. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Got the idea. So the ring has cooled and is now a permanent part of the mandrel. The mandrel's back in the lathe and I'm rough machining that register. It will be finally machined in the small lathe itself. So now I'm machining the threaded portion of the mandrel. This is down to 15 millimeters. So it's time to cut the 14 TPI thread on the mandrel and I've ground up this, this uh, tool here. So, so that's a 60 degree angle. I very carefully stoned the edges, which I think you can see there, and a very small radius on the tip. So I've looked up my tables uh, for uh, 14 millimeter thread and the depth is 0.866 millimeters uh, minus the crest there which is h over 8 which gives us uh, 0 0.758 millimeters which is uh, just over 29 thou about 30 thou and then because my cross slide set over at 30 degrees half the angle uh, that actually is the hypotenuse news here so that's 33 thou so I'm going to look for some somewhere in about 30 thou of cross slide travel to get to full depth of cut. So I've got my parting off tool in operation again just to provide an undercut here for me to run into when I do the screw cutting. So I'm using my threading gauge to set up the threading tool. Actually the tool is cut slightly less than 60 degrees so that it provides clearance on the right hand side. So the angle I'm setting up for is on the left hand side, the chuck end of the screw gauge. Placing a piece of white paper underneath just gives me the contrast there to make sure I really am getting the tool aligned with the gauge. Once everything is set up, actually the screw cutting process is very quick. So I've reinstalled the mandrel in the lathe and um, lubricated it and just uh, tested it to make sure it's all spinning nicely. All we need to do now is to turn down this register to fit the bore in the chuck and uh, also to chamfer the thread on the end here. So uh, I've set up a tool in here 
Um, it's at a funny angle so that I can get right up close to the headstock. And uh, we'll just uh, very carefully machine this to final size. We can see here, if we look closely, that there is a problem. As I rotate this, you should see that the gap between the edge of the boss and the flange is not parallel. And sure enough, if I put uh, feeler gauges in there, you can see it quite clearly. Tight slack yeah that's not parallel so there's clearly a problem so to better understand and to illustrate what the problem is i've got the chuck uh, set up as i had it before and i've screwed the mandrel back into the chuck and you can see it, it is a really good fit that's a good fit uh, there's no problem with that fit between the the thread I cut and the existing thread in the chuck. But the problem you can see is here. So at this point, we've got some run out. Not good, um, but uh, what's that about three, four thou. And then as I move the DTI away, see we're up to about 13 thou there. And we'll come right up to the end here. And on the end here, it's what's that? Around about twenty thou. So you can see the problem here. The thread, the centre line of the thread, is not square with the clamping action of the jaws, and that's what I want. And, and uh, so I need to. Um, I've decided what I need to do is to rebore this chuck i'm going to bore out the register i'm going to bore out the uh, thread and i'm going to put um i'm going to insert a bush we'll loctite that in and then we'll machine the thread in the bush and the register at one setting so that means that the chuck should fit nicely on this mandrel uh, that's the only way around it i should have done that right from the very beginning but um Anyway, hopefully we can redeem the situation. Well, I've run out of time because of the extra work required to get this chuck fitted. I wasn't expecting this, uh, but maybe there's a lesson there. Uh, buy relatively cheap equipment and be prepared to make modifications like this. I guess that's the lesson. So next video, we will go ahead and uh, bore out the register and also the M14 thread. We will mount it on the laid and we'll test for run out thanks for joining me as always if you've appreciated the video do give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you've not done so already i hope to see you next time thank you